computer will handle the lower bandwidth. Okay, so we've got a problem. We have a midpoint at three comma two. We've got an endpoint at eight comma five. I want us to play with these problems. These are problems that really deserve play. There's no reason not to play with them, except I understand we have homework and obviously other things to do, so we don't want to play too long. But when you're playing with this, I want you to imagine at least the first problem that you do of a new kind of type as being a puzzle. And so we've got the midpoint at three comma two. Can we draw that out first? Lashanti, are you cool with that? Yes. All right, let's do that. So one, two, three, and then I'm gonna go up two, and where those two intersect, like playing Battleship, I've got three comma two, right? Yes. All right, and then the next one is I have an end point at eight comma five. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I need to go up five, three, four, five, and so that's gonna be right here. I love pictures because they're going to help us to check our work. So we have the midpoint and we have an endpoint. And that means that, what, if this is my midpoint, where do you think, like just put a guess on the paper, where do you think the other endpoint might be? See if you can draw that in with the blue ink. A guess? Mm -hmm. So this is one of the endpoints. I've got a midpoint. Guess where the other endpoint is going to be. Like just draw it. We don't even need numbers. Is it going to be underneath the um, midpoint? Show me. Like, like that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. that looks good to me, right? And we can check our understanding. So I've got this as being one direction. This is another direction. They should be the same length of direction. And so that's what we're playing with. I love that. So we're probably going to get some number that looks like it's going to be a negative number, comma, a negative number, right? Yes. Okay. It's, this is, yeah. Go ahead, Lashanti. I'm sorry. I was going to say yes because it falls in the um, quadratic um, three. Quadrant three, but really nice job. Quadrant yeah. Three. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so let's now see if we can get this to emerge. We're kind of emerging this puzzle. We already have a pretty good guess. We know that it's needing to be negative. Uh, let's see. I'll show you a couple of different ways to do it. You want to see my, my simplest way to do it first? Yes. All right, here's my simplest way to do it. How do you go from this point to this point. You go over a little bit and down a little bit, right? Yes. How much do you go over? I think you probably do it the do you go over three? To go from let's see, I started at eight, I ended up at three. How much did I go over? Oh five. I went five. In fact I went five to the negative. So I'm gonna say I went negative five. We all agree? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then how much did I go down? Three. I went down three. We'll capture that as a negative three so we don't ever get it confused, okay? So I did that once. That got me from the end point to the middle. That means I got to my halfway mark. Do we all agree? Yes. Would it make yeah. sense that if I got to the other end point, it would be me just doing it again? Yeah. Yes. All right, let's do it again. I go five over and I go three down. Somebody tell me where we end up. Exactly where our second end point is. Well, what's what's that number? What's the coordinates? Um, is it two something? Like two, one, or one, one? Well, two would be right here. Well, I'm in negative one, one, negative one and negative one, or negative two and negative one. Okay, so talk me through how you're getting those numbers. I don't know. I'll just guess because the point looks like it's right there. Nah, you didn't guess. Oh, okay. You're guessing for the picture. Never mind. Okay, but do it. We have some numbers. Use the numbers. How would we get? How would we not guess and say that I'm starting at three and I'm going five backwards? Where do I end up? Don't you just do three minus five? <laughs> okay, three minus five would be what? Three minus five would be negative, negative two. two. Do negative we think that that's where I end up when I go five steps backwards from three? Yes. Okay. What do we think? General consensus, Ajane? Yeah. Okay. Here's the way that I look at it, because because that was from the negative five. You could think of it as subtracting that way. You could also have thought of it as saying I was going to add that distance, but that distance is a negative distance, and that gets me to negative two as well. However you want to think about it, it's the same thing. Do we see that? Yeah. Okay. If that feels mm -hmm. a little bit weird, play with that. We can just take a point, add a distance to it, and if that distance is negative, that just means we are subtracting the distance. If we add a positive distance, that means I have a further distance along the positive. Okay, so I know the first thing is going to be a negative 2. 
because I always write my coordinates as x comma y. So I've got x comma y, and you said that my x coordinate is negative 2. What's the y coordinate? If I started at 2 and I went down 3. It's negative 1. And that's your answer. Kind of crazy, right? I saw mine differently. Say that again. That was just made so easy. Do you like I that? I'm glad. Now, there's a few other ways we can look at it that are more complicated, but no less wrong. Here's a couple of ways that I would look at it. Uh, you could look at it as saying, um, let's see, we could check. We could check our answer to see if the distances are, in fact, the same. So, for example, with our distance formula, we have these side lengths that we've drawn in where I've got a length here and a length here, and I could look at the distances here, and what kind of picture have I just drawn by doing that? Take a look um, at my black figure here. What's this picture? You draw a, um, what is it called? A triangle, a what's the name? Tri triangle? It's a type of triangle. I forgot the name of it. It's the right triangle. It is a right triangle because I know that up and sideways are perpendicular. They're exact, you know, opposites in terms of degree. If I do one, I do nothing of the other. So what I've created is a right triangle. And you all know an equation that deals with the lengths of sides of right triangles. What's that equation? The Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Do you want to know something crazy about the Pythagorean theorem? It was not invented by Pythagoras. Pythagoras was a you know old white Greek dude. In fact, it was actually can be traced much earlier than that over to um, like Babylon or where is it Babylonia, which is more Middle East area and and northern Egypt. There are records of the Pythagorean theorem in the Middle East and Egypt way before uh, Pythagoras and the Greeks found it. And even, I think, before all of that, it was found in China. So Pythagoras was actually one of the last people to become aware of this formula. He brought it over and then put his name on it, which I think is kind of horrible, but I think happens all the time if we're not careful. So a little bit of fun trivia there. Uh, so this is the Pythagorean theorem. Let's use it with everything we had over here. We said we had a side length of 5, right? And we had another side length that was 3, right? So we could actually figure out what the distance is here. That would be 5 squared is 25. 3 squared would be 9. And then if we add that together, that would be 34, which is c squared. And so you could write c as being the square root of 34. And it turns out that if you do the same thing here, because it has the exact same steps and the exact same side lengths, we can prove that, again, that distance, C, has got to be the same here to here. So there we are. Our logic stood out that not only does it make sense we could go sideways and down the same amount, but that result is that we actually go diagonally the same amount, too. How are we feeling? That way seems a little more complicated. I like the this first one's way. a little bit weirder because I also would have needed to know yeah. where the points were to do all of this, right? So I'm I'm good with this way too. But it's always kind of fun to I don't know, throw a little shade at Pythagoras for cultural appropriation. Ain't it another way to do that too? Sure. Which way are you thinking? Um, because I looked up a YouTube video because I didn't know how to do it. Um, That's cool. Math is math. Uh, the dude he had, he took. He used the like midpoint equation, but he took um he put x right there for that. I don't know, cause my notes are all over the place. That's why. I, okay, I, did I, it look like this? Did he say that he had a midpoint and the midpoint was equal to uh let's see, eight plus x over two, comma uh, five plus y over two? Yeah. Like then, that. <clears throat> Yeah, so this is, this is the midpoint formula. Formulas are great. Formulas are rules. I hate rules because I don't know where they came from unless you know where they came from. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's take a moment and see if we can understand where this came from. What this is saying is that my number three comes from taking eight, adding it to something I don't know, and dividing it by two. Do we want to take a look at where that might come from? Yeah. 
Okay, so here we go. Here's the eight, if we remember from our picture. Eight was the X coordinate that I was working with, true? Mm hmm And then I said that I was going to, let's see, divide, let's see, I was going to add it to some other number and divide it by two. So when we add to something else and we divide by two, what we're really talking about is kind of getting like a half somewhere, right? Mm hmm so we can use that as a hint to say that that's probably why it's going to get us to this three. This three comes from taking eight, adding it to something, and finding a halfway mark between it. Oh, my halfway mark would be the halfway mark between my eight and whatever this future x value is. So really, this, this expression says one thing. It says this point is the same as this point. But if we wanted to look at it without the commas and such, what we're really saying is that three equals eight plus x over two and two equals five plus y over two. In other words, I get to my midpoint by starting with an endpoint, adding it to another endpoint, and then finding the halfway mark. Is all that making yeah. sense or feeling weird? Yeah, that, that makes sense. Okay, now here's kind of why that, that works. You can think of it, maybe you haven't been, been taught this way before, but it's an interesting little tidbit. When you think of averages, when you think of dividing things in two, what you're really finding is the middle of two numbers. So if you think of taking three and adding it to five, that gets you eight. And if you divide both sides by two, that gets you four. We agree? Yeah. On a number line, you could put a dot at three. That would be maybe here would be three. You could put a dot at five, that would be right here. And four is the middle of the two, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So dividing something by two really means trying to find the midpoint of two numbers. So if I take something and divide it by two, I'm really finding the middle. Even when you do something like trying to do, um, I don't know, six divided by two, that's really trying to say, what's the middle between six and zero if I divide it by two? And that would be three, wouldn't it? Yeah. So that's another way you can think of dividing by two is really saying, where's that balance point? Where's that middle point on my number line? Here, that's exactly what we're doing is we're saying I have a middle point between a number I know, a number I don't know, but I know how to find middle points and I know what that middle point ends up being. If you can start with this true statement and then work out the algebra, you have no choice but to get to a correct answer. Kind of, kind of crazy. You can even kind of do that in your head a little bit. We multiply both sides by 2. That gets me 6 on the left equals 8 plus x. And if you subtract 8, that gets me negative 2 for x. And oh, lo and behold, there we are. Negative 2 for x. How are we feeling on that? I like that formula, but I like the first one better. Do it however you want. Math is all about changing perspectives, but you need to understand why both work. Um, I actually solved it the later one way. You tried it the other way? The later way? Yeah. Fun. Good. We learned something interesting. We learned that averages or halfway marks in between numbers are really halfway marks between numbers. Kind of an interesting little tidbit that we figure out.